Hello, everybody. I'm sorry. This show, <laughs> we got, it just got crazy um, this morning. My connections and everything is acting up. And my guest, I think I disconnected him, so he'll be back on in a minute. But in the meantime, today is Saturday, <laughs> June 13, 2015. And this is the Bunny Slippers of Evil Job Seekers Call-In Show, presented by Evil Bunny Consulting. I'm your host, Tyrone Griffin. And if it's 3 p.m. you have on your bunny slippers, you are not looking for a job. Welcome first time and returning listeners. In this show, we discuss strategies and tactics of job search, staying motivated and dealing with career transition. For more tips, resources, daily motivations, and to listen to archive shows, go to the website bunnyslippersofevil.com. There you also find links to our Facebook page and Twitter handle. If you are listening live, you can call in with your questions at 347-202-0929. Again, that number is 347-202-0929. Oh, excuse me, and a word from our sponsors. Evil Bunny Consulting is the alternative to expensive outplacement. They give job, they give company sponsored job seeker workshops as well as a one on one job seeker boot camp with the money back guarantee. For more information, go to www.bunnyslipperserevil.com. Resume Edit is the low cost, high quality resume writing company. Resumes as low as $35, written by certified resume writers. You can find them online at www.resume, the number four, edit.com or call 404-860-2473. Be sure to tell them you heard about them on the Bunny Slippers of Evil Job Seekers Podcast. Whew. Let 3DResumes.net turn your resume to a web page with a customized domain for 12 months for only $30. Help hiring managers and recruiters find you, make your resume available 24-7, and get a professional, personalized email address just for your job search. So you can see my online resume at TyroneGriffin.com. And for more information on how to get your own, go to 3dresumes.net. If you are thinking or about to look for a job in today's world, you will find a new reality in the job search process. The world has changed. Job search today is much more complicated than five years ago. Volumes of resumes, more applicant screening systems, depersonalized applications, panel interviews, team hiring, long complicated applications, branding and social media. Yes, the world has changed. But have you? Are you still trying yesterday's approach? Why struggle and miss out on today's opportunities? Career Oyster is here to help you. Great coaches, the latest resources, unique strategies, personally tailored to your job search. Find out the new reality and how you can prevent costly mistakes. To register for a free 45-minute private session with head coach Howard Caddy, go to careeroyster.com. Find out the facts now. You'll be glad you did. Remember their motto, the world is your oyster, be the pearl. Well, good morning, everybody. I apologize for little technical things this morning. Um, Howard, are you there? Hey, <laughs> hey, Howard, I, I don't know what happened on that first call. I don't know, but I'm, thank you for calling back. Oh gosh. It, 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 let me tell you, Howard, to say it's been a crazy morning is, is a true understatement. Um, uh, not going to get into the details of it, but I'm about to drive up, uh, North today for about six hours and we're doing our packing. So you can imagine what kind of fun I'm having. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, today's show is uh, resume tips. And um, let me get my, I apologize, I had to get my notes here. Uh, okay, oops, sorry. Let's review the best practices for resumes. First of all, Howard, again, I, as always, I want to thank you for coming on this week. Um, you know, I really, you know, I truly appreciate it. All the time you spend with us, uh, you give some great information. And uh, I just wanted to tell you, I, I personally am truly thankful for everything, for all the time you come on the show and help us and we give us free information. And I hope um, you found it beneficial as well, that people are, um, people are, are, are calling on you because I, you know, I, I quote you a lot on this show and I give you credit for it all the time as well. But, uh, but I, I think you are one of the true gems to people in transition. Uh, if that's, if that doesn't sound too weird to say. <laughs> oh, that's well, okay. That's great. So, all right. So let's let's stop playing around. I got my got my notes and everything together now. 
Howard, I'm telling you, crazy. Um, <laughs> but um, but anyway, so that's yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, it's always you always have a plan B, C, D, E, and F, and that's what you need to have. Yeah. So, so let's talk about uh, best practices, or let's review best practices. Um, let me let me start with this, this first question: How many people send resumes and the job postings and get no responses, and and why don't they get responses? all the sense in the world and you know it's funny because you know what you're saying is um you're absolutely right it's like you know and I, i've talked about it a couple times on here in the old days where we would apply um you would get the, the hiring manager would have to look at um a couple of hundred resumes or 50th or whatever him or herself you know 
Whereas now, you know, they might get for any job because of the Internet. And, you know, those resumes were the ones that people sent in. And the only time people sent them in was because they saw the ad in the local paper. You know, I mean, think about that. You know how we used to uh, recruit for jobs. We recruited locally. So if you wanted a job say, in Atlanta, you had to pick up the AJC. You know, um, before the Internet, you know, I couldn't recruit somebody from Texas. You know, I could I couldn't put I couldn't put it out on on the internet someplace and get and get requests from everywhere. So, um, yeah. So now you got a bigger pile, and yeah, you're you're absolutely right. All of those levels of screening, their job is to whittle down that number. Period. That's all they're trying to do is whittle down the number. Um, you're, yeah, but you're absolutely right. They're trying to screen people out versus screening people in, and 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 then you know there's some human bias in that as far as the recruiter doesn't want to bring to the hiring manager um, people that the hiring manager might not want. You know, so if somebody's on the borderline, the recruiter will say, well, I, I like this person, but I know this hiring manager, he's kind of a stickler for, for, the, um, for the requirements, so I'm not even going to present them. Where, you know... Well, the recruiter doesn't, mm -hmm. the recruiter doesn't even call the person to figure it out. Right. right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody wants to do things fast and, and you know quick, fast, and in hurry, as they say. But um, right. but now you're you're absolutely you're absolutely right. Um. So anyway, I'm rambling. Okay. So let me ask you this right. question: um, What does an exceptional selling resume look like? Yeah. So so the key is, yeah, let's say your resume gets gets the attention of the recruiter. He likes some of the keywords and things and he gets there. So what makes that resume really work to get you all the way into the manager and work through the process is very simple. It's easy. It's an easy resume. Easy to understand the objection, mm -hmm. I mean the objective. At the top of the resume it says the objective or it's implied with the title. You don't have to guess what this person wants to do. That's, a lot of people, that's really an interesting controversy. Some people say don't put an objective on top of the resume. I, I think that is 100% wrong because the manager wants to know, either implied or direct, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. The first thing a recruit to know. So you have to have an objective up there through title. The second thing, it has to have the keywords, obviously, as we just discussed, we found. The third thing, it should be easy to read. And many resumes are not easy to read. They use a lot of, uh, of words, and they have these long paragraphs that say nothing. It's a bunch of fluff about productivity and improving performance and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to have topics that someone will be interested in. What's the expertise? What's the technology? What's the products? What's the industry? Those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. It's easy to understand, so you can say, okay, this person it wants to do this, and he has background that's in this sales, in this role, and with this industry, and with these products. It should be that easy, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. that will allow to be aligned or qualified for the opening. Mm -hmm. And then finally, you should be able to see where the person has some accomplishments or background that says, I, I'd like to do this job, and here's why I'm qualified to do that job, mm -hmm. okay? so. Resume should be easy to quickly grasp. Even in the first page, you should know right away what this person's about. And it should be forward-looking, not backward-looking. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Most resumes are backward-looking. They write a, a chronological bio that goes back to their, their track record. But they might be applying for a, a transition job or a job that that is a, a little different than what they had or a new industry or something else. They need to put their background, especially in, in the, on the front page, to reflect where they're going, not where they've been. Mm -hmm. And they need to rewrite the resume to point to where they're trying to get to so that the recruiter and the manager say, yes, this person looks like he's someone that has the qual some qualifications and he wants to do this position. Mm -hmm. okay? So that's what I mean by forward looking. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. You know what I was thinking? You know what I always say is that job search is like dating. And the first thing when you meet somebody you might want to date, the first you don't the first thing you tell them is not how many people you've dated. <laughs> right. 
am, am I am I lying? <laughs> You know, you know and, and, and I look at, you know, the, the resume is the same way, you know, by you telling people, oh, I've worked here, 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 here. You're in, in a dating situation. You're like, you know what? Well, I've dated like the rest of your team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your turn. You know, what I mean, it, it, that's so. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree with that idea of forward looking, forward thinking um, on your resume. I use an example, when you're trying to sell a stock, they write a prospectus up. And yeah. the prospectus talks about forward-looking statements, where you're going, not right. where you've been. Right. It certainly gives your history, but it emphasizes where you're going, because you wouldn't sell any stock based on the fact of where you've been, mm -hmm. because you weren't making money. Yep. <laughs> and what is it they say on Wall Street all the time? Past performance is no indicator of, of future performance, basically? That's correct. Yeah. So you have to mm -hmm. So let me ask you this, Howard. What are examples of effective keywords? Good, good question. And that's, believe it or not, that seems so it's such an easy question, but most people will get it wrong when I do a speech or a webinar and I ask them about it. But people are, they think key, key, keywords might be manages, fails, uh, the, the develops. All those are verbs. Mm -hmm. They are not keywords. Keywords are the word, the nouns. Keywords are nouns. They're nouns. They're, they're the words that people use to search for resumes, mm -hmm. and they're also the same words that you would use to search for a job description. Mm -hmm. You use different things. So for example, number one keyword is titles. You search jobs by title, mm -hmm. and when you search by title, you use generic titles. You don't use some special title that's in your company. So therefore, the first number one keyword is title. Mm -hmm. The second thing that someone gets found, right? We're trying to find people and find jobs and not get them in the right swimming pool, right? Mm -hmm. Same area. It's industry. If you're in my industry, if you're in the retail industry, great. You're in my game. Right. If you're in the finance industry, you're in my swimming pool, right? If you're in the uh, high tech industry, great. You're in my industry. So industry is a big differentiator because you know the elements, the uh, hot buttons the way the parameters work in the industry. Mm -hmm. So the, the third keyword that people should use is product or service. Product or service. If you understand software, great. ERP software, great. That's a product. If you understand uh, uh, accounting uh, a general ledger, well, that's actually uh, that, that's an expertise. Mm -hmm. But if you understand a proper accounting services, if you understand um, um, Consumer goods. These are these are products that can tell me a lot about your background. Mm -hmm. You could also have uh, uh, expertise. Expertise is what department or what role do you play in the company? Mm -hmm. You have accounting expertise, you have HR expertise. You can have IT expertise. You can have executive expertise, general management expertise, operations. Right. Mm -hmm. So expertise tells me something. Mm -hmm. And then finally, in a lot of careers, uh, not finally, but in a lot of careers, technology is a big keyword. Mm -hmm. If you have a certain kind of technology, we could use your skills, especially in technical careers, or engineering careers, or bioengineering type careers. Mm -hmm. So there's technology, methodology that are keywords. People search by them. People also search by who you've worked for. Mm -hmm. You've worked for industry league. You work for IBM, you work for Google, you work for Amazon, you work for uh, Microsoft, more key companies, you work for certain hotel chains, you work for uh, uh, Procter & Gamble. Mm -hmm. Those are all more key companies that tell someone that's a badge, you've gotten into that environment, you know a lot, you have discipline, you know structure based on that industry. Mm -hmm. So these are the kinds of key that we should use, not verbs, not the action words that you use to describe what you're doing. Those are tasks, and they're mm -hmm. very important, but they're not important until you talk about uh, what role, what you're in the swimming pool and get found. After that, you can talk about what is the depth of your background and how much do we pay you. Mm -hmm. That's what tasks are about. You know, I always love, uh, for the, the key words people always put is energetic. <laughs> and that always cracks me up, yeah, because it's like, as opposed to what? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, <laughs> if you have to tell me that, you know, uh, yeah, I don't, you know, 
as you know, Howard, uh, there's a lot of you know job search is very serious, but sometimes there's some stuff that's just funny. <laughs> that's all there's just some stuff that's just funny. Um, Absolutely. Let me ask you this question: What makes a resume persuasive? The content. What 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 yeah, do you say so makes? Now, yeah. Okay. So there's a couple things, right? There's content. There's visibility. Or how it how it uh, comes across, right? How mm-hmm. how visual is it? And uh, and then there's the the layout, the format, which is actually not as important as the first two. Mm-hmm. People really like a clear look at resume and visibility, and mm-hmm. we can talk about that. But that has to do with putting the right amount of white space, using bold things to to highlight uh, certain elements of the resume, and trying to and trying to make it visually appealing. Mm-hmm. Well, let's first talk. about Number one area, which is content. I already mentioned the fact how important a clear objective is in a resume. I got to know as a recruiter when I write resumes, what the person want to do? And, it, and it, it doesn't matter whether it's a transition or a continuation of their career or whatever. It should be real obvious by title, somewhere on that first page, this is what the person wants to do. You don't say, I want to be a, a sales rep as a, as a, somewhere in there looking for a a sales representative position, and in your first job title says sales manager. Mm-hmm. That's a conflict right out the back. Right. So it doesn't line up. So you, you gotta you gotta make an objective that says very clearly this is this is what I want to be, and try to get all your titles and everything else to line up. The first page is like a newspaper. It's a marketing document. It has a headline, and it has a lot of keywords, which are topics. You notice the newspaper always has topics. Mm-hmm. That's why you grab on this topic. And if you like the topic, you'll turn the page to the page 12A and read the topic. Mm-hmm. Well, we should have our resume using these keywords as topics and using them to show them, hey, if I have this expertise, this expertise, this expertise, this technology, this technology, this technology, this industry, this industry, this industry. The first thing should be a group of hooks. And no matter where I read it, there's some hope that gets my attention so that I continue to read the resume. Mm-hmm. The myth about the one-page resume and keeping it short because people don't read it is a misinterpretation of the data. What mm-hmm. really is going on is the recruiter won't go past the first page if he doesn't get hooked. Mm-hmm. So the length of the resume is almost immaterial. What really matters is does the first page get my attention? Mm-hmm. And that's why a forward look resume which talked about what you want to do and your, and your qualifications or keywords that take you toward your goal is so important to have that front page resume. Mm-hmm. So you use bullets, you use topics, not all these action verbs. Every sentence of most resumes begins with an action verb. That was a 1980s concept. Mm-hmm. Proactive action The problem in today's world is the SEO search world. People look for topics. When I get a resume, I don't look for it. I go right by those verbs. Mm-hmm. I see topics. And so that's what you want to lead your sentence. Then you can use your action verbs to describe what you did, but you must use a lot more topics mm-hmm. in, in your resume. Uh, okay? Does that make sense? It makes sense. So yeah. that would make it a thought resume. And mm-hmm. the final thing that is still critical is that you have to use a lot of numbers and metrics to show that where your accomplishments uh, mm-hmm. have occurred underneath the topic. Right. Because numbers are are, are, yeah. are quantifiable. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. You make up the example of newspapers, and you're exactly right. You know, not just newspapers, magazines sometimes, where they'll start an article um, on page 27. And, you know, they'll go page 27, 28, and then go to page 191 for the rest of the article. You know, right. they're, what they're trying to do is draw you through the magazine. You know, it, and it's funny, and, and I think about too how um, it might seem like off the topic, but uh, grocery stores are laid out. They're laid out a certain way so that they will draw you through the grocery store. You know, they figure out which ways people walk when they come in the store, and they put certain things there. And they figure out it's like, why is it that milk is always at the back of the grocery store? Exactly. Yeah, because they want you to go all the way through the through the grocery store to get to the milk. Same thing with uh, soup. Why isn't soup alphabetical? Because they want you to scan through all the different kinds of soups. Yeah, I, I took a lot of marketing workshops. Howard, it's funny the stuff that you know. It's but what it is seriously. Um, 
it's it's not manipulation. Well, it is kind of manipulation, but it's it's understanding human nature and trying to um, manipulate human nature. It's trying to um, get people to do what you want. Which, in the case of you know, a grocery store, is you want to draw people through the store, the whole store, if possible. With a resume, uh, we, 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 let me back up. Uh, same with the newspaper. Those headlines, newspapers and magazines, those headlines are designed, and then the first couple of sentences of the story to catch you, to draw you through the story. Same thing with the resume. Your, 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 your main topics should be enough to draw the person. Starting with your objective, it should be enough to draw the recruiter through your resume, the hiring manager to, to draw him to read through the one or two or three pages of your resume to make it um, well, look, interesting reading. Yeah. Look at the Huffington Post or CNN or any of those blogs, any of those sites, they all have the topic on the sides and the mm -hmm. front and they give you a partial view just because that's what gets your eye. Yep. If you like the topic, you're going to turn the page. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, Howard, I had a couple more questions, but we only got about three minutes left, and I want to give you time to talk about what you're doing. So uh, what we will probably do is I'll schedule it in a couple of weeks, and we'll do part two, because I got I probably got another two or three questions to ask you on this just this topic. Okay. Yeah, but, we can do that. But let me ask you now, so what have you been up to? Uh, I've been up to quite a bit right now. I've uh, been building out a group of uh, webinars, and I've also been offering some uh, free complimentary sessions on uh, interview coaching, which okay. has really been uh, well received. And uh, I'm also doing a, a, some of that uh, interview coaching which is going to be oriented a little bit towards B2B type work besides the uh, the consumers that I help and the job seeker. Oh, okay. So uh, any, anybody that's interested in that can, can go to my website and, and arrange a free uh, session. Mm -hmm. I've been doing some... Uh, I've really been showing uh, some interesting myths about the interview process. And people have certain preconceived notions about how to approach interviews that are just not effective mm -hmm. uh, in, in today's school, et cetera. Okay. And so I've been working on that. And in fact, uh, I've got a lot of activity lately from some of the articles and things I've been doing. So my you know, business is, is very busy, but I could use, uh, I, I am building a, a group of coaches, so we could always handle more people than you uh, Wow, that's great, man. I said, Howard, you were one of the people. And I mean, I don't just say this because I'm talking to you, but you were one of the people. I mean, we've known each other now it's about five years. I got to meet you when I was in transition back in 2010, about four years. Yeah. And, yeah. You, you know, I remember coming to your sessions at, at, at Life Lessons. Remember those? <laughs> and you would record them. <laughs> yeah. And you would record them and make the audio available. And I remember when you, when you first started. Um, doing that, I remember going, who is this crazy guy that's recording these sessions? And, you know, what is this all about? And um, I, I tell you, over the years, I have found, you know, listening to lots of job coaches, career coaches, I have found that you truly are uh, the best I've ever met. And I don't, I, don't, I don't say that to blow smoke. You truly are, from a career coaching standpoint, nothing against anybody else. But my 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 perspective is you are the best that I've ever met. Well, thank you. Um, that's a high compliment. <laughs> I know. Caught you off guard, right? <laughs> you don't get married there. Thank goodness for the radio. <laughs> you heard that audio, the 60 seconds left. That's the stuff I usually hear that nobody else hears, but I had to put this phone on speakerphone this week. But uh, but anyway, uh, I got about 30 seconds left. You Will you come back? Sounds like a plan. Well, Howard, as always, it is, is a pleasure, it's an honor, and uh, I will be, uh, I'll probably call you right after the show goes off, just to uh, catch up with you for a minute. But uh, as always, I, I truly want to thank you for everything you've done for me, for the for the, the job networking community and everybody else. So with that, we're going to end the show. You heard my 10-second announcement. Everybody have a great week, and we will talk soon. Take care, and bye-bye. Bye-bye, Howard.